know. This is my 1948 Chevy. Excuse the Mopar hat. It's kind of a sympathetic, you know, soft spot of mine. But anyhow, I moved on to General Motors about 10 or 12 years ago, mostly. Uh, no brand loyalty with me, really. But I doubt I'll ever have another Ford. They gave me so much trouble uh, for several years. Uh, some of you might have known me back in my 40XT.com days. Uh, no, they're all gone. I turned into like Darth, the Darth Vader of EXP. You don't want to know the story. It, it, was, it was bad. But anyway. I took part of the front wire harness out of this car. I'm going to have to rewire this car. Um, if you want to know how to rewire a 48 Chevy, there are how-to videos on YouTube already. Uh, someone I'm acquainted with has done a most excellent job explaining how to do it. Tells you where to get materials and so on and so forth. Highly recommend it. I'm following what he has already outlined. But what this is about is showing why am I having to rewire this car. And why do I not trust the existing wiring? Well, let's see. What do we have here? Look at this stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's breaking apart. Look at that. The insulation just broke. I can peel it off. So what's going to happen when this thing starts going down the road and the wiring is doing this and that, you know? It's not going to move much, but it will move a little bit. Getting hot in the engine bay, cooling back off, you know? Not safe. Well, I'm not the smartest tool in the shed, but I'm smart enough to know that when I see electrical wire like this, there's no insulation on half of this thing. If you want to try to drive a car like that, more power to you. I ain't done it. Anyway, I'm going to reuse everything that I possibly can just because that's how I do. Uh, I could buy a new light switch. There's nothing wrong with this one except it's dirty, needs to be disassembled, cleaned, and put back together. And I know how to do that, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to make a how-to video on it. Uh, if you want to know how to, there's probably somebody out there who does. Uh, some of these old terminals, if I can't find modern replacements, I'll reuse them. I'll take them apart, desolder them, and put them in my new ones. Uh, these old light sockets, uh, sockets themselves look fine. Got a little bit of rust on them, nothing that a wire brush won't knock off. I'll fix them. The ignition switch, this is part of it. It's toast. This is the part that went into the front engine bay. Uh, mounting clip on it to hold it to the firewall. Big, heavy, thick wire. When I took everything apart, I mounted, or I wrote down on tape where everything was mounted so I know how to build the new one and then put it back together the way this one was. Anyway, that's outlined in others' videos on how to build wiring harnesses. I'm just copying what they did. My terminal block on the driver's, or this is the passenger side fender. See these little rusty things right here? If you can even see those. That's what's left of my junction block. There was no junction block. It's gone. Brought it away. It was made out of Bakelite. And that stuff does real good in a controlled environment like inside. Don't do so good outside. But everything's tagged as where it needs to go. So, I'm going to copy what they did. I've got a wiring diagram that shows what color the wires were originally supposed to be. If I look here, some of this was in loom. Some of it was well hidden from the sun and the elements. Like here is a, what they call a natural, with a black cross tracer zigzag. This is a black cross tracer too, but it's a smaller gauge wire. And for me to find out what gauge wire it was, I'll use this thing. I 
grabbed that off eBay. You see that? Tells you what the wire gauges are. See? So how do you how do I do that? I said this wasn't a how-to video, didn't I? Oh, it's like this is a how I did it video. You do everything at your own risk. The gauge has a number on it. You go by what the slot says. That says that that's supposed to be a number 10 wire if it will fit in the big or the small part of the slot. Okay. It's not a 10. It fit in the 12. It doesn't fit in the 13. So that tells me that that must be a number 12 if I'm doing this right. I may be doing it wrong. But anyway, maybe my next part, I'll be able to show a nice, clean, redone, new version of this. 